UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Welcome to a very special presentation of a UFO update. I think you'll find this very interesting. So this is our lead story. Very, very interesting, yes. Pentagon finds no evidence of alien technology, a new UFO report. We'll get into that and so much more. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Folks, have you taken a good look at the banks lately? On the surface, everything seems fine. But there seems to be a whole lot more going on underneath. It's like looking under the hood of a car and finding a mess of broken wires and parts. The parts are loans for homes, cars, and those credit cards we all use. Folks, they're hitting record highs. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Why risk your money for a tiny 5% return when things are so shaky? This is where noble gold investments can help. They're like that friend who knows all about keeping money safe. They suggest gold and silver, oldies but goodies in the financial world. Plus, they've got a sweet deal, a free quarter ounce Gold standard coin this month if you qualify. Pretty good stuff, right? If you're curious, just give them a call at 877-646-5347. It's just a chat, no pressure. They'll help you figure out if gold and silver are right for you. Or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Once again, the number 877-646-5347. Folks, We've invested in noble gold, and quite frankly, I'm glad we did. I'm going to read the article in Toto, and then I will weigh in on it. My inbox basically blew up over the weekend. LA, what's going on? It seems like they're backpedaling. That's exactly what's going on. It's, um, but I'll, I'll get into the punchline in just a little bit. So once again, here's, here's the headline. Uh, Pentagon finds no evidence of alien technology in new UFO report. Pentagon Press Secretary Air Force Major General Patrick Ryder speaks during a briefing at the Pentagon on Tuesday. Okay, so here we go. The Pentagon says it found no evidence of extraterrestrial spacecraft in a new report reviewing nearly eight decades of UFO sightings. Hmm, I find that very hard to believe, but let's continue. The 63-page unclassified document published on Friday is the most comprehensive report the Pentagon has produced on the topic, and yet another instance in which it has batted down claims of alien spaceships. The Pentagon's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, ARO, I just love these anagrams that they use. It's like, I'm really going to remember that, right? All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, ARO, issued the report, which covers claims of unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAP. Notice they don't, well, they do call them UFOs, but... The, the vernacular in the present day is UAP, the military's terms for UFOs. Let me read that sentence again. The Pentagon's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO, issued the report which covers claims of unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAP, the military's term for UFOs. Like that little bait and switch there. Dating from 1945 through October 2023, the Arrow was created in 2022 to identify and resolve reports of UAPs slash UFOs. Arrow has found no evidence that any U.S. government investigation, academic sponsored research, or official review panel has confirmed that any sighting of a UAP represented extraterrestrial technology. We have to get back to that in just a second. Pentagon Press Secretary uh, Major General Pat Ryder said uh, in a statement Friday, all investigative efforts conclude that most sightings were ordinary objects. Here we go. The result of misidentification. Hmm. Many of these sightings turned out to be drones, weather balloons. Oh, you got to love that. Spy planes, satellites, rockets, and planets, according to the report. The report dismisses some of the most explosive claims in a July congressional hearing. 
in which former military officials claim the government is concealing from the public what it knows about UFOs. In one account, a former Air Force intelligence officer alleged the government has long operated a covert problem in which it has reverse engineered recovered UFO vessels. To date, Arrow has found no verifiable evidence for claims that U.S. government and private companies have access to or have been reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology, Ryder said in a comment. The office plans <clears throat> to publish a second volume of the report later this year that covers findings from the interviews and research done between November 23 and April 24th, the Pentagon. So here we go. So this is what I think is happening. We know in the Roswell 1947 crash, we know, first of all, that something did crash. We know that Jesse Marcel Sr. was absolutely above board. Uh, he was not drinking. He was not some sort of a, a crackpot who was looking for attention. He was the intelligence officer of the 509th Bombing Group. The 509th is the, the Air Force, at that time it was Army Air Force, that dropped the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. These guys were stationed in Roswell. It's all in the film. Two films, lamarzulli.net or streaming.lamarzulli.net. Check it out. But wait till this is done before you do that. Marcel, the intelligence officer, went out to the debris field with Mac Brazel. He, he gathered up some of that debris and took it back to his wife and son, woke them up at a very early hour in the morning, like 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning, and showed them the material and said, what you are looking at, you'll probably never see again. This is from a craft of an, from another world. Walter G. Hout had an affidavit that was only to be opened and read after he was dead, which is exactly what happened. It's a completely contradictory story than what we have here. Completely different in every aspect. Because, um, unfortunately, General Patrick Ryder is saying none of this has occurred. And I'll get into that in just a little bit, how we can make a statement like that and be justified because everything is compartmentalized. So he's telling you what he knows. He's the spokesperson. But David Grush, who was the whistleblower in July, stated what he knew at the congressional hearing. And he stated that these were interdimensional entities. So when Ryder states that no evidence of extraterrestrial technology, in some ways, is, is it a word game? Could be. Does he know about David Grush? More than likely, absolutely, in my opinion. There's no way to vet that unless we could sit down with, with Gen Major General Ryder, which I'm sure is not going to happen anytime soon. But he's more than welcome to come on, and I would love to interview the man. By the way, I have interviewed generals before and um, got the same sort of doublespeak. But one general, and I'll tell you the story in a little bit, I, I caught him. I caught him, and I'll, I'll tell you the story. But I digress, so what else is new? But... The bottom line is this, that he can say that because everything is compartmentalized. So Arrow only knows what it gets, all right? We don't know the actual information, the actual cases that it says, it gives you this whole thing from 1945 to 2023, but, but have those cases been cherry-picked? We don't know that. Why would David Grush come on the record in Congress under oath and state that the United States government has in its possession craft that had been retrieved from wreckage. Why is it that the Roswell films that we did, when we sit down with a, a innumerable witnesses all over the place, all stating on the record that the, the wreckage from the craft was taken to Hangar 84. And then of course, in the debris field, we are in Hangar 84 and we're talking about it and we're just doing a discovery. Last week we posted, or two weeks ago, we posted an interview I did with a gentleman uh, when I was in Lubbock, Texas. His grandmother, and I told you about this before, but I need to reiterate it. Why? Because we have new people coming in. Um, this gentleman's grandmother was working for the Army Air Force basically all her life, lived in Roswell most of her life. And she's about a month away from passing, from dying. And she's with her grandson, and he's driving the car, and they're going around the old Air Force base. And Hangar 84 is surrounded by a fence. We got in, and that's all in the film, and I'll leave it at that. So... He jokingly says to her, is Hangar 84 the building that they took the bodies to? She says, yes. And he does a double take. He's figuring, well, she's just joking. She's not joking. And then she elaborates. They wouldn't allow us in, but that's where the wreckage and the bodies were kept. Walter G. Hart, in his deathbed 
affidavit only to be open after he's dead and passes, stated on the record that he went into Hangar 84 and he saw the wreckage and he also saw the bodies under a tarp. The lighting was poor. He couldn't make out a lot of details, but they were there. How many witnesses do we need? How many witnesses do we need before stories like this from uh, General Patrick Ryder just fall with their own weight? Plus, we were in the debris field and we found two pieces of metal. We found two pieces of metal. That metal was buried six to eight inches underground. And a metallurgist who looked at it stated, stated to Frank Himmler and Chuck Zukowski that whatever this came from, whatever it was, underwent some sort of traumatic event, high heat, a crash, whatever, which is exactly what we believe happened in the Roswell event. So let's circle back here. Um, where is it? I'm trying to find that, that one sentence. Arrows found no evidence that any U.S. government investigation, academic-sponsored research, or official review panel has confirmed that any sighting of a UAP represented extraterrestrial technology. If they know it's interdimensional, then he can get away by saying this. And he can look right at the camera and state that it's not extraterrestrial. So he's right that there is no extraterrestrial technology. I do agree with him. It's interdimensional technology. Anna Paulina Luna stated on the record fairly recently that what um, David Grush was saying, listen carefully, that it was not extraterrestrial. It was interdimensional. And immediately the reporter, well, what do you mean interdimensional? I mean, and that opens up our wheelhouse and our, our mission statement to expose the reception of the prince of the power of the air and to herald the return of the King Jesus. And that's what we try to do here constantly. So exposing a deception People go, well, why do they need craft? Well, why does Jesus need a sword when he appears to Joshua? What is that flaming sword that turns every which way in the garden? You see, we've got a truncated view of the supernatural. Technology exists. Technology exists. How do you think a 1,500-mile wide, 1,500-mile long, and 1,500-mile high New Jerusalem descends from the heavenly realm, from another dimension? How does that happen? So in my opinion... Um, and this is the punchline. The old guard was in charge. This represents some, may perhaps some of the last vestiges of the old guard. The old guard in 1947 put the kibosh on the Roswell UFO report. They got it right. Army recovers flying saucer. That was July 8th. July 9th, General Ramey says, excitement not justified. It's a weather balloon. And Jesse Marcel Sr. is trotted out as a patsy, as the fall guy, and thus begins the cover-up. The old guard ran with that story for decades. Commander David Fravert appeared on Tucker Carlson with, at one time, classified footage of the tic tac shape UFO. And I want to thank my good friend Sean C. Green. This is a 3D model. Uh, we're going to be selling these on our website fairly soon. Pretty cool, huh? But... Um, and it's based after uh, on the Bob Lazar side, and you can see that he's opened up the inside so you can see it. Pretty neat thing. Silver disc. I looked up and saw a dull silver disc. 1917 Fatima. I looked up and saw a dull silver disc, a spinning silver disc. What is that silver disc? It's not the sun. It's not the Mary of the Bible. But once again, I do digress. So here's the deal. Um, the new guard is pushing the agenda forward. People like Commander David Fravor, Luis Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, and others pushing the agenda forward. Leslie Keene, New York Times reporter, um, and of course we've got uh, other people that have come on the record as well. I think of Nick Pope. So there's a concerted effort to push the narrative that what we're looking at is real. It, they are not, and I'll, I'll, I just have to laugh and say this again. Um, where is it? Hold on, folks. Let me get to there. Yes, they are not, they're not drones, weather balloons, spy planes, satellites, rockets, and planets. Some of them are, and we get that. I mean, people email me with, with photographs. Oh, hey, look at this. What is this? That's Starlink. That's a whole, you know, Elon Musk satellite deal up in, up in the sky. It's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Starlink. And it can fool people because they don't know what they're looking at because they've never seen anything like that before. The bottom line is the cover-up continues. This is the coming great deception. UFOs are real, burgeoning, not going away. The sightings that David Fravor, Commander David Fravor, first of all, let's just back up 2017. That's where the cat came out of the bag. That's the first rung on the disclosure ladder. This is another rung on the disclosure ladder, telling us, nothing to see here, keep moving. How many times have we heard that? 
How many times have we heard that, right? Just, just mind your own business, pay your taxes, be a good little citizen, and, and we'll take care of everything. So it, this Scott man refutes um, Colonel Corso the day after Roswell, where he talks about disseminating wreckage, parts of the craft that came out of Roswell to private industry. So Ryder says, no, 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 that never happened. Well, who do we believe? Colonel Corso's deathbed confession or this man here? Is he backpedaling? Is he the old guard trying to keep everything under wraps? In my opinion, that's exactly what we're looking at. The new guard, people like Commander David Fravor, Luis Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, Nick Pope, and others, are saying that the, the, that the phenomenon is absolutely real. David Fravor went on the record on Tucker Carlson, and Carlson stated, or asked him the question, in your opinion, what was this? What do you think this was? And Fravor looks right at the camera. Whatever this was was not from this Earth. He's right. Is it extraterrestrial? In my opinion, absolutely not. Is it interdimensional? In my opinion, absolutely so. These are the fingerprints of the fallen one. This is the coming great deception. Folks, I can't say it enough. Call to action. Please go to our site. If you've got a DVD player and you want to watch the DVDs, this is the deep dive. This is um, investigative journalism to the nines. We go places. We talk to people. We're not just in the library. Library is important. And the Lord knows I have done my homework when it comes to Roswell. I've been reading about that since I was a kid. Since I was a kid. And the first books were published by Charles Berlitz years, decades ago. And I had them all in my library, which burned. So sad. So the bottom line, folks, for me is that uh, this is old guard, old school. And he's very careful by, at what he says. But then you've got Fravor and Luis Elizondo and Christopher Mellon and all the rungs of disclosure going up. This is the old guard pushing back against the new guard and saying, hey, not so fast, citizen. You're not going with this. And that's my take on it. So lamarzuli.net to order the DVDs or streaming.lamarzuli.net. Are you aware that we have eight films? We are the only Christian ministry on the planet that has eight films on the burgeoning UFO phenomena, one through eight. My business partner and co-director and co-producer, uh, Gil Zimmerman, will be here on the 21st. We're putting the final touches on 9 and 10. Those will probably be released the end of April. More about that in the coming weeks ahead. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out our website. Check this stuff out, folks. We are the tip of the spear. There are others who talk about it. But in my opinion, and I'm boasting, I totally get it, with all due respect to other researchers, we are the tip of the spear. We've got eight films on it. And we do a deep dive into cattle mutilations, which a lot of people, some people don't even want to talk about. The abduction phenomena where people are taken. Implants, that's in our Watchers series, number seven and number eight. It's all there. It's absolutely all there. Crop circles, our film on crop circles. And finally, the two films on Roswell. Our book, Further Evidence, deals with further evidence, people coming on the record. My gosh, what are you waiting for? I will be in Arkansas this coming week, and then later on in April, I'll be in two places. Once in, um, in Oklahoma. Go to the website, lamarzuli.net. It's all there. Um, I will be in Guthrie, Oklahoma, which is right off the 35 north of Edmond, where we used to live. So I'll be in Guthrie with Mondo Gonzalez, Lee Brainerd, and um, Nick Garcia. So check us out. We're going to be there. Can't wait for that. Then in April... It's just me. I'll be down at the Calvary Church in Jupiter uh, and can't wait to see all the folks again. Last, last time we had, I don't know, six or 700 people on a Friday night. That's unbelievable. And I know the views are up well over 160,000 for that first, uh, that first primer. Anyway, folks, thanks so much for watching. Please remember, when you see stories like this, weigh them in the balance. You know, weigh them against uh, David Grush. Commander David Fravor, Luis Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, Nick Pope, and others who have come on the record. People like myself, people like Tom Horn, Gary Stearman, Dr. I.D.E. Thomas. It's all there. The phenomenon is real, and we believe it originates from another dimension, not another planet. UFOs are real burgeoning and not going away. Thanks for watching.
Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Late this afternoon, a bulletin from New Mexico suggested that the widely publicized mystery of the flying saucers may soon be solved. Army Air Force officers reported that one of the strange discs had been found and inspected sometime last week. Our correspondents in Los Angeles and Chicago have been in contact with Army officials endeavoring to obtain all possible late information. Joe Wilson reports to us now from Chicago. The Army may be getting to the bottom of all this talk about the so-called flying saucers. As a matter of fact, the 509th Atomic Bomb Group headquarters at Roswell, New Mexico, reports that it has received one of the discs which landed on a ranch outside Roswell. The disc landed at a ranch at Corona, New Mexico, and the rancher turned it over to the Air Force. Rancher W.W. Brizel was the man who discovered the saucer. Colonel William Blanchard of the Roswell Air Base refuses to give details of what the flying disc looks like.